My hero of this past week is a 44-year-old former actor and comedian who now happens to be the president of a small country in Eastern Europe. This country has recently been invaded by one of the world's major powers, and that world power is the next door neighbor to this man who I'm calling my hero for this past week. Again and again, this unlikely hero has spoken out in favor of hope and strength instead of the despair he sees all around him. He has refused opportunity to leave this war-torn homeland and move to safer ground and to bring his wife and children with him. He has made international news for his fortitude and nerve. He has caused many to look with admiration at how one can face an impossible situation and not lose hope. How does he do it? And all the time, the solution has been there all along. Simply get out of there. You could easily find the safety and comfort that you wish so deeply, and you could take that precious family of yours and move anywhere in the country. There would be an open door for him. All along, this man has heard the tantalizing offers that come in from many foreign lands. Let us help you with a ride out of town. Why do you insist on being a martyr? If you leave, you can live to fight another day. But today, we meet our very own hero. In a wilderness, perhaps not so unlike the wilderness of the streets and highways and byways of that war-torn land in Europe. Today's gospel brings us face to face with the one who could easily have given up on the fanciful dream, the dream of goodness coming out of bad. We find our gospel hero in a dark and despairing place. He's gone, not even by his own volition, into this dreary place where the evil one tries over and over again to bring him down with foolish promises and false hopes. Simple. Make bread from rocks if you're so hungry. That shouldn't be a problem for you. It's simple. Take control of all the nations of the world with one simple gesture. Shouldn't be a problem for you. Pull a little trick and get a bunch of angelic messengers to grab you just before you go over the edge. Even your naked foot, it will not feel a scratch. Not too much to ask. It is true for all of humankind that the deepest temptations of life are often wrapped around the false assumption that problems will all go away if we can just pull the right strings. If we can bow down to the right rich fat cat, if we can lie or cheat or steal or pull a fast one, our temptations are always to take the easy way out. It's in us, I think. It shouldn't be so hard. Why, just sort of compromise a little bit here or there, tell a little white lie, and, and things will all be better for you. Like Vladimir Zelensky, if you pick up the family and take a fast jet out of harm's way, all will be fine. Again and again, the easy solution is false. The answer is not to be found in sleight of hand. The real test is to face the truly despairing events of life and to somehow stand tall. This quote from Mahatma Gandhi seems perfect for our text for today and for our world's most recent dilemma. When I despair, I remember that all through history, the way of truth and love have always won. There have been tyrants, murderers, and for a time, they can seem invincible, but in the end, they always fall. Think of it, they always fall. This is a reality that Jesus wrestles with in our gospel. 
When the Spirit leads him into the wilderness, he has to face a series of powerful assaults on the truth. He has to learn how to discern God's presence in a bleak and lonely wasteland. He has to trust that he can be much loved and still famished, valued and vulnerable at the same time. He has to learn that God's care resides within his flesh and blood humanity, within a fragile vessel that can crack and shatter. He has to learn, and we often must learn it again, that to be loved is not to transcend the other grimmer truth, the truth of dust and ashes, the truth of wars and rumors of wars. The devil offers Jesus three opportunities to walk away from this essential lesson. But I wonder how these false but easy sounding solutions might become invitations for us to think about. Invitations to trust God's love in the barren places of our lands, not a shortcut around them. Because it's one thing to trust God in retrospect, with our hardships are long all over. It's quite another to trust God in the moment when the comforts and certainties we cling to burn to ash. This quote, shared from the National Psychology Association, seems important and helpful to people may not realize this, but it's sadness and despair that sometimes allow a person the most to grow. Being comfortable with where you're at often doesn't motivate you to change or improve your situation. However, being in despair forces you to try to get out of it. That's why despair can be a good thing. It brings out the best in us. If the cross teaches us anything at all, it teaches us that God's precious ones still bleed, still ache, still die. We are loved in our vulnerability, not out of our vulnerability. We are the children of a God who accompanies us in our suffering and in our despair. Not a God who guarantees us a lifetime of immunity. And why is this? Why could this be good news? It is good news because we are also the children of a God who resurrects. Final, final answer. There is no suffering we will ever endure that God will not redeem. The story of humanity is not a story that ends in despair. It's a story that culminates at an empty tomb in a kingdom of hope, healing, consolation, and joy. The gospel tells us that Jesus doesn't choose to enter the wilderness. The Spirit leads him there. But Jesus chooses to stay until the work in that wilderness is over. We don't always choose to enter wildernesses either. We don't volunteer for pain, loss, danger, or terror. But the wilderness will happen nonetheless. The world will always remind us that wilderness experiences will always be there. If a maniac nation just to the northern border could place this reality before the people of Ukraine, then it will come to us also in the guise of sitting in a hospital waiting room. A relationship that seems to have lost its joy and delight. A child troubled, heading in the wrong direction. A sudden death taking one dear to us away. Or a crippling panic attack. The wilderness appears unbidden and unwelcome at our doorsteps, and it insists on itself. But it does not mean that God can redeem the most painful periods of our lives. It does mean that he will be there with us in the most painful periods in our lives if we choose to stay and pay attention. Does it mean that our desert, deserts can become holy even as they remain dangerous? Yes. Despair is all around. 
The wilderness is not just a place far away. It can be right in your very home and in your very own neighborhoods. We cling to the story of a foreign land who has a human hero standing between them and loss. It's a story that's recurred in my mind over and over again, even if I choose to limit the amount of television watching and news viewing I'm going to do. That man is not the Messiah. He is not the Savior. But he exemplifies for our day a beacon of light and hope. May God bless President Zelensky, but may he also bless all of us in our struggles with despair. And as we look all around us, all we see are reminders of our own human nature. Somehow God has said, in that wilderness place, in that darkness, which you will someday encounter or have already many times, I will be there with you. I will help you to endure. I will never leave you without my help, my strength, my blessing. Amen.